In this lesson, we're going to be identifying polynomials by their proper names. So on the screen in front of you, I have the different ways that we label polynomials based upon the degree of the polynomial. That is to say, if you look at the equation and you find the x with the highest power, whatever that power is, that's the highest degree. And then also by the number of terms. That's how many pieces the equation is comprised of. So I've got about five examples for us to work through. For problem number one, first we're going to be looking at the degree of the function. So we're going to scan the entire equation for the highest degree of x. This is the highest degree of x, and even though it is not written, it is to the first power. So this is a degree one polynomial, which we have a name for. It's called a linear polynomial. So the first part of its name is it is linear. Next, we're going to look at how many terms there are. That's how many pieces. Pieces are broken up based upon addition and subtraction. So this is a 5x plus 1. So there are two pieces to this problem. There are two terms, so we call that a binomial. Bi meaning two, like a bicycle. Binomial means two terms. So it's a linear binomial. And this would be the proper name for the first equation. Now the second equation, which we have written in blue, I would scan the entire equation for all my x's and look for the highest power of x. Typically, when it's written in standard form, the highest power of x is the first term. This has a degree of 2, so that is called a quadratic. So thus far, this function is a quadratic. And then we look for how many terms there are. Here's one term, here's a second term, here's a third term. Remember, each term is broken up by either addition or subtraction. So this has three terms, which we call a trinomial. So this is a quadratic trinomial. And then finally, we got number three, y equals negative 17. Now, you might initially look at this and go, whoa, 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 there is no x's. There are no degrees. There's always actually going to be an x. It's just that that x is to the zero power. But anything to the zero power, as we've learned in previous math classes, is just equal to one. So there is an x to the zero power kind of hidden there. It just doesn't do anything. Therefore, this is a degree zero polynomial, which we call constant. Which, when you look at the original problem, when I erase the uh, x to the zero component, that kind of makes sense because if they say y in this problem, y is equal to negative 17, well, that's just a constant number. Negative 17 is just negative 17. It doesn't contain these x's or variables, so it's not going to change at all. Therefore, it must be constant. Next, we need to look at how many terms there are. Well, there's just one term because there's no adding or subtracting to it. So this is a one-term function, which we call a monomial. Remember, mono means one, so a single term would be called a monomial. Monomial. Then we're getting into a little bit more tricky problems, like number three, and, or sorry, number four in purple. Number four, if I scan it, the highest power of x is this third degree. So I'm looking for a degree three polynomial, oh, and that's called a cubic. So thus far, I would label this function as a cubic, and then we're going to look at the number of terms. There's a term here, a term here, a term here, and a term here. So there are four terms in this one. Now, any time you have four or more terms, we simply refer to that as a polynomial. We don't have special names other than for monomial, binomial, trinomial. Anything with four or more terms, we just call it a polynomial. So this is a cubic polynomial. And then finally, we got the orange problem. We got the last problem that we're going to be working with. Now, this one is uh, a little bit wonky because if you notice, this isn't really in standard form. It goes from seventh power to first power to third power to no power, or sorry, power to one. And then, then we got this constant. These two are kind of in the wrong order. But luckily, in this case, we don't really need to worry about that. We're not needing it to be in standard form. All we're going to look at is the highest power of x, and the highest power of x is this x to the seventh power, so it is a seventh degree. So it's going to fall under this category, where the degree is four or more. There are some special names for these, but in general, 
we've mainly focused on constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic functions. Everything after that we call an nth degree, which is simply to say that we just say what degree it is. So this orange function, the highest power was seven. So we would say this is a seventh degree. And then we count the number of terms. There's one, two, three, four, five terms. That also, kind of like the purple problem, is greater than four. So we will also call this a polynomial. So it's a seventh degree polynomial. Now, in future lessons, we're going to kind of expand upon this a good bit, but not fully like you will in pre-calculus. The main reason that we come up with these terms is one for communication's sake, but also eventually, once you start graphing these different types of polynomials, naming the degree as well as the number of terms can actually generate a good amount of information about how that function behaves both algebraically as well as graphically. 